to you. What? So now you've probably heard about Beauty and the Beast, right? That children's novel from like way back in the days. But have you ever heard of the beauty that is the beast? Yeah, I'm talking about that. See, that thing is basically Toyota's latest throwback to a simpler time. Now that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the Toyota FJ Cruiser. So what is it? It's basically a blend of the past and what Toyota believes is the future. It's an SUV. It can pretty much go anywhere, do anything, just like you'd expect any Toyota SUV to do. Shares a lot of heritage with the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, but is completely different on the outside. Let's take a closer look. The moment you look at this car, the first thing you're going to notice is the curves, right? It's got curves on every corner, the front, the back, every single edge is nice and curved. Now that's something you're only going to find in a new modeled car, something closer to the 2000s, 2015s, around that range. But undeniably, it's still a box and that's the whole point. It's a box with curves. The boxy shape comes from that retro look that comes only with cars that came out of the 1940s and 1950s and somehow the engineers at Toyota managed to blend that in harmony, sheer harmony. Here's something you just have to see. So the front door opens just like normal, right? But the back door, not so much. See this is what you call a suicide door. You can probably imagine why it's called that, but I don't need to elaborate any further. This is something that Toyota basically designed to keep with the short wheelbase and uh, that's the only way to get enough room to have a second door at the back. When you come around the front, what you're going to see is it's got these gorgeous round headlights reminiscent of a time long gone. But on such a modern car, it just looks kind of weird but nice at the same time, right? This is amazing. When was the last time you actually saw the word Toyota spelt out in the front of the car? Because think about it, ever since I can remember and probably you as well, it's always just been the Toyota symbol, right? So what the designers at Toyota decided was they said, no, that's way too modern. We have to go completely retro with this. So they scrapped the logo and just put the old fashioned emblem, Toyota. And somehow it just looks magically beautiful. Now you must be wondering what's under the hood. Thankfully I can tell you it's modern, okay? It's got this super powerful 4 liter V6 engine with VVTi technology that basically pushes out just under 200 kilowatts of power. And all that with 377 newton meters of torque. Gorgeous. Now, my dear friend Casey, for some reason unbeknown to me, decided to stick 24 inch rims on this machine. But it still looks pretty awesome. Now that's not the only thing he's done. He's also basically covered the entire vehicle in this matte black wrap that runs all the way from bumper to boot and it looks brilliant but you must be wondering so what's the point of putting this uh, wrapping all over the car think about it you're in the bush you've got thorn trees everywhere running through it not a scratch to your car so that's pretty cool but on to other things tell me what do you think about the toyota fj cruiser do you like it do you hate it Log on to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash autospotbw 
write your comments in there and we'll be sure to feature them next time. I'm off guys. This week on Autospot, we feature Toyota Fortuna and the Fiat 500. The Fortuna is quite obviously a very rugged machine. It comes uh, with 4x4 options. It's not just a regular run-of-the-mill SUV. The platform it's built on is uh, pretty much the Hilux's raised body. That translates into a good, comfortable ride and feel very rugged. But that's not the point. The point is, we all know what it can do, right? But what I'm trying out today is, it's about 4 o'clock, almost 4.30. We want to see how well this car takes on the 4.30 traffic jams. And it doesn't make sense to actually get one if you are a part of that 4.30 traffic jam. So let's find out for sure. All right, so we're coming up on some traffic right now. So one of the nice things is this car has an eco uh, mode where it basically tracks your economy. And as I'm driving, it's got an eco indicator on the screen that uh, shows me basically what is going on as far as fuel economy is concerned. Uh, so, as I can see now, if I want to conserve fuel, I just have to accelerate a bit slower, shift my gears a little bit earlier, not let it go on for too long. And uh, when you're at a traffic light, you can actually um, you know, turn off the vehicle when you're stopped. If you're waiting uh, quite a long time, that does save fuel as well. Now the vehicle does have Bluetooth um, that comes standard. So I can actually sync my phone uh, to, the, to the car and at least that will keep me going for a while. I can listen to all my classics. Uh, if you've got Apple Music, if you've got Spotify, any of these music services, you'll get great streaming music right from there. So, one of the nice things is the ride height. And I cannot explain how incredible this is. So, as we're driving through this traffic here, you kind of get this uh, bird's eye view in a sense of uh, basically what's going on ahead of you. So as you're approaching the car in front of you and you're moving bumper to bumper, you can actually see how close you actually are. And now for me, I'm used to driving small sports cars. So this is kind of a luxury to kind of, you know, to see everything from the top as opposed to feeling like you're riding on a skateboard towards your impending doom. So this is definitely a lot better from that respect. I think one of the things that you'll find is that even as you're driving you have more road presence and it's a word that I use uh, quite a bit and road presence just means that people can see you. So when you're coming people notice you, you stick up, you know? and uh, that road presence is definitely there with this vehicle so some of the changes for the new fortuner include um, it's got the touchscreen system with reverse camera it's got a uh, keyless uh, push to start as far as uh, starting your car is concerned uh, steering controls for bluetooth uh, audio you can control your audio settings everything straight from the steering panel itself it's got automatic headlights now what that does is as you're approaching from 4.30 towards 5.30 your headlamps are basically going to come on by themselves which is super efficient, very nice, very nice feature to have. Now one of the things you'll notice about this car is it is kind of halfway there between a Prado and um, you know one of the like a RAV4 or something like that. It's 
it is a mid-segment car so it does have a lot of detailing it's got a lot of the features that the RAV4 does all, I mean it's got all the features that the RAV4 does and it also has some of the features that the Prado has so you're kind of getting somewhere in the middle set middle of those two segments there and um, that feels pretty good you know it's, it's a good mix a good balance and good value for money as always with Toyota so let's talk about something over here and I'm coming back again to fuel economy right so it's got a button here called eco mode now I just press that button and it lights up the dashboard with a eco indicator and now what happens is the car is going to start behaving in a way that conserves fuel which is really nice um, that obviously means if I press the accelerator it may not have that same responsiveness as it would have had without the eco mode but it's still great you can also always switch it and it's got a power mode which um, increases the throttle response and the, the, the gear shifting if uh, that is what you want. If you want more aggressive driving style or more responsive feel, that is an option there. The car does come with an onboard computer uh, that'll basically show you, it'll display all your key statistics about your driving style, about it, it's got these really cool bar graphs that'll actually display everything about your fuel economy and uh, it's amazing how much thought and, and attention they put into these things you can control most of them from the little indicator screen uh, in the middle of the dashboard but you've also got a lot of information that comes on the center console as well You know, for some reason in this car, it just doesn't feel like 4.30. I mean, traffic is just pulling today. It's just brilliant. Maybe it's the car. Maybe it's just the day. I don't know. But it's a lot better than it normally is. I'll tell you that much for sure. We're talking about the Toyota Fortuner. You can insure this car for as little as 1,400 Pula. But depending on your circumstances, this could go up or it could go down. So this week on The Car Doctor, we've got something really interesting to talk about. We're... You ever wonder what those lights on your dashboard actually mean? And of course, more importantly, how do you get rid of them? Well, let's find out from The Car Doctor. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Please switch off your engine. Uh huh. Please turn the key on. So tell me about these lights. What are these lights all about on your dashboard? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's important for you to know what each and every light is communicating to you. These lights represent different malfunctions, different faults, and you need to understand what they mean when they come on. We'll start with the light on the extreme left. Okay. It has brackets, and a circle, and an exclamation mark. That is the brake light. Number one, it means the brake fluid is low. Number two, the brake pads are worn out. Or the brake linings are worn out. It can also mean to say, you are driving with the handbrake on. Whenever you forget to take your handbrake off, that light will come on to tell you that you've forgotten to release the handbrake. The second light, what does it look like? Um, the steering wheel. It looks like the steering wheel, yes. That's power steering light. That suggests to say there is no power being supplied to the power steering. Oh. So whenever that light comes on, you need to take it seriously and take the car to a workshop so that they can attend to it. The next light, you can see it's a car with two open doors. It means to you that there's a door or there are doors that are not properly closed. So when that light comes on, you need to make sure that all your doors are closed. The next light, as you can see, is the one that's flicking at the end of the dashboard. That light is for the seat belt. When you sit on the seat and you do not fasten the seat belt, 
the light will flicker like this and ultimately start producing a beeping sound to warn you that you have not fastened the seat belt. So next to it is the oil light. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most important lights on this dashboard. Whenever that light comes on, you need to stop the car, switch it off and call for help. It means there's no oil in the engine or the oil pump is not pumping the oil. If you force drive the car with that light on, you are damaging your engine. Sometimes you may damage it beyond repair and it will cost you a fortune. ABS is an anti-skidding braking system and when it comes on, it means one or more sensors are malfunctioning or the ABS machine or base ABS pump has stopped working. So you need to get attention. The first light that is orange is shaped like something. What is it shaped like? Um, okay. Yeah, like an aeroplane. Actually, that's the shape of an engine. We call that the engine light. The engine light, when it comes on, it, you see, if you look at the color, it's orange. It's not necessarily dangerous. It is just telling you that there's a malfunction in the engine. It could be that there's a coil that is misfiring or a plug that is misfiring or the electrical of the engine have got a problem. So it's safe for you to drive to your workshop if the engine light is on and they'll go and check for you and tell you what the problem is. Now, below it is a sign of a battery. That light when the engine is running should not come on. When it comes on, it's suggesting to you that the alternator is not working or the battery is not charging. Okay. Yes. So you need to get that investigated because if that light comes on, there are chances that you are going to have a car break breakdown and you will not be able to use your car because if the battery is not charging, it's going to lose power and then ultimately it's going to stop. So whenever any light comes on on the dashboard, go to your workshop. But if the oil light comes on, stop the car. Thank you, car doctor. You are welcome. Have a lovely day. They say dynamite comes in small packages and the Fiat 500 is no exception to this rule. The major concern with micro compact cars is how much boot space is there. Let's find out. The Fiat 500 is a very unique car. It's a car for somebody who's looking for style at an affordable price. It has a new exterior design but has kept the Italian styling. It has this cool glass top roof and as you can see it has this clean line that goes right across the car. And guys it comes with optional mag wheels. What I love is how these lines just keep going. And as you can see on the bonnet right here we have the two lines that go right across the bonnet. And of course the Fiat emblem right there. The design is very unique and really beautiful. It has this grill at the bottom that makes it look mean for such a small car. And of course the LED headlamps for a clean finish. You wouldn't believe the boot capacity in this car. Come along. As I was saying, it has a 185 liter boot capacity. So you can put in your books, files, or anything you wanna throw in there. Let's go check out the interior. The Fiat 500 has a really beautiful interior. Like I'm looking at all this and it looks really fancy for such a small car. And safety is very important. It has seven airbags. It comes with a hands-free phone answer just so you can be on your phone and have both your hands on the steering wheel. It also has a USB music device for your entertainment. It has a touch screen and electric monitored side mirrors. Cool features for a starter's car. I'm impressed. We're talking about the Fiat 500. You could insure this 500 or 600, but depending on your personal circumstances, this could go up or it could just come down. Did you know Lexus is Toyota's premium car brand? It is known for performance, reliability, and attention to detail. It has sold in over 70 countries worldwide and has become Japan's number one premium car brand. And that brings us to Lexus flagship, the LX570. Guys, the LX570 has a mammoth engine. It is actually a 5.7 liter V6 
engine like can you imagine that i'm still in awe myself and it is actually really good for any terrain because i'm driving in the bush right now and the response is just really amazing one other thing that i love about this car um is the infotainment screen i mean obviously when you're driving you want your music and stuff like that and that's the infotainment screen right there it doubles as a navigation system because as a woman driving you don't want to get lost especially in the bush I also love the fact that my 101 Army, you know, it has me handles. It has a fridge right there for, you know, to cool your drinks. You can be drinking and driving, so it has to be, you know, your soft drinks. And for my back passengers right there, there's a DVD for both seats, actually, um, so that they're also not bored out of their mind if, in case they don't like, you know, the music that I'm playing or stuff like that. And have you guys seen how posh the leather seats are? I mean, <laughs> talk about uh fancy living and um the seats are actually heated as well so you know on your winter days and stuff like that that will really be cool and you know other than just that it has a four-way climate control as well uh you know so you are sure that you will be handled when you're in here in terms of you know weather and stuff That was exhilarating. The LX570 has incredible off-road capabilities as you've just seen. It is absolutely massive and it sits seven comfortably. I am definitely taking six of my girls for an experience. This car is a beast. I'll catch you guys later. Hi guys, this is Zahra for Alpha Direct. We're talking about the Lexus the LX570 here. You can insure your car for as little as 1500 a month but depending on your personal circumstances this can either go up or it can go down hope you enjoyed today's show join us again next week for more fun and adventure on autospot botswana's first lifestyle and car review show